Hi class, um, I'm doing a couple video booths. As I said earlier in the semester, there are going to be a couple topics that you're going to have to learn on your own. And that's, that's not a terrible thing, because you have to learn to maneuver your textbook a little bit. Um, the thing we're working on right now in class is epoxide opening. And remember, a video boost is truly a boost. It's supposed to boost you ahead a little bit instead of dragging along. So I'll do a little more of this tomorrow, but I'm moving right into the Diels-Alder reaction. Tomorrow, please bring your... Um, your packet of handouts with you. Please keep bringing those with you to class. It's really important. Um, so we are working on epoxide openings. And what I want to show you is the difference between acids and bases. If you take an epoxide, which we said is a very strange system, and you put it into a strong acid like hydronium ion in water, what will happen is the epoxide will protonate. Okay, and many of you said that right off the bat. It's very good instincts on this. Now, the thing I want you to realize is that this protonated epoxide is rather like a bromonium ion in the sense that you really don't have a, you don't have full bonds because the O should really only have two bonds. They're kind of strained anyway, but it should only have two bonds, but it has three bonds instead of two, which means they're not full bonds. Just like here, we said these are not full bonds because bromine should only have one bond. So the O is sharing more than it should as soon as that H pops on there. When that happens, these bonds are partial bonds, and you should think of this the way you thought of the bromonium ion. And the way you would think of a bromonium ion is that, if it had a lack of um, symmetry to it, is that this carbon would bear more of the positive charge than that carbon. So remember, the positive charge isn't really on the O here, it's on the H, the C, and the C. And if these are not full bonds, this carbon is going to bear a little more of the charge than this carbon. So it's a little more like a carbocation. So it's carbocation-like. Something to think about. You've got to think back a little bit and review bromonium ions. All right, so then what would happen, if I had a bromonium ion and it was in water, the water would attack that site from the other face. And that's exactly what happens here. The water attacks this site from the other face, the opposite face. So what's going to happen to those two groups? It's going to be an inversion, right? These two groups are going to move from the bottom to the top. Okay, that's my symbol for inversion, right? So this is coming in. The methyl's moving up, the ethyl's moving up. All right, so what would this look like? I'll try to, and this is a leaving group, right? This is almost like you're making it into a good leaving group, too. This should remind you more of like an SN1-like, and when we go over the base again, it's gonna be more SN2-like. So this would come in, this would open. You would have the water on the bottom. You know how I love to do my chemistry in the plane of the board, okay? So you get something like that. This would have a plus charge, and what would you do? Taxi cab, right? Taxi cab off the hydrogen, and you would end up with a dial. Okay, ultimately you would have a dial. Now, let me write that. Okay, so ultimately you're going to have a dial. And this would have a very specific stereochemistry as indicated here. It's a stereospecific reaction, but the difference with an acid versus a base is protonation. It behaves more like a cation. You're more concerned with carbocation stability than you are with steric issues. Okay, and what we said in class, if you switch this to base, the base situation, so if I change this, and I always find when people can write this mechanism, they get it. They're really getting it, what it's all about. Okay. It's kind of, it's actually rather simple. So if you have NaOH, and by the way, what we're going to do in class is look at a variety of bases and a variety of acids, because this is very versatile. There's all kinds of stuff you can do with it. But if, if I have this, this is actually going to attack, the first event is going to be the attack on the delta plus. And these are more like full bonds here. So you don't have that carbocation-like situation. So there are these two delta plus carbons. One may be more delta plus than the other. But regardless, you don't have that introduction of the positive charge. So it's not like a cation. So what comes into play is the idea of a nucleophile coming in and needing space. So this comes in, hits this, opens that up. And once again, you're getting a very similar product from this. But notice the stereochemistry is different because the attack occurred over here 
the inversion occurs on this side, this stereochemistry stays the same. And then ultimately, as we discussed in class, the proton exchange is going to involve taking a proton off the water. Okay? So I want you to go over that. Um, I'm going to give you some, some problems to do along these lines. Okay. Um, you know, you, sh you should realize that if you want to make, if you want to synthesize this, this is called a trans um, vicinal diol, you would use epoxide opening. Either with acid or base. So this could be traced back to this alkene or to this epoxide, let's say. We talked about how to make epoxides last time in class. And, or this, this, this is the same epoxide. These are just two different routes. You could do this with acid or you could do this with base. If you're thinking synthetically, this is forward. You get this plus its mirror image. I want you to think about that. Now, if you want to make, how much time do I have left? Three and a half. Okay. If you want to make a cis dial, and right now you should be having a meso alert because that's a meso compound. If you want to make a cis vicinal dial, you have to do it a different way. Okay, but you will still be using oxidation. And this is the reaction I want you to learn on your own. Okay, so if you want to do this, I really have to invest in a new eraser here. Okay, so um, how to make cis vicinal diols. Okay, what you have to do is you take an alkene and you add your, fa your favorite oxidizing agents. You would add KMnO4. That's, that's going to be one of your favorites, as you see, in water. Or you add, this is an or situation, osmium tetroxide, um, followed by sodium bisulfite in water. And when you do this, you will get a cis addition of alcohols. We are not, I'm not going to hold you responsible for this mechanism, but it's one that you're going to have to use synthetically. So for example, if I wanted to make this, if I wanted to make that, the way I would make it is I would take this alkene and I would add KMnO4 or I would use this osmium tetroxide method. And I want you to try to master this on your own a little bit. All we know about this mechanism is it goes through sort of a cyclic intermediate. There are certain things we know about it. So for example, osmium, um, and I can, I can write a mechanism for this for you if you want to go over it in my office, but it goes through sort of a cyclic intermediate like this, and then these are clipped off and become OHs, okay? And the permanganate behaves a similar way. So permanganate and osmium add to the alkene, this, this should be an alkene here, to form a cyclic intermediate like that, and then the, these bonds are essentially hydrolyzed, and you get an H here and an H here, so it's a cis vicinal diol. So the significance of this is this is the opposite world to epoxide world. If you epoxidize and you open, you get, you get anti-addition. If you use either of these reagents, you get cis addition or what we call syn addition. Okay? So try to go over that one on your own. See you in class.